Man, wearing a mask all the time really makes me forget how often uh, I used to shave. <laughs> I've kind of been letting myself go lately, god dang. Hey guys, how's it going? Powin here, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome to have you guys here for another video. So in today's video, I'm pretty much giving you guys an update on my 2020 Honda Civic Si. I know it's been eight or nine months since I posted on YouTube. I apologize for that. I've been taking a break from YouTube, just focusing on the day job with acute instruments, taking on more responsibilities in my life. I'm sure many of you guys can relate to it being adults and the older you get, the more responsibilities you take on and you start to realize uh, how much more valuable a healthy work-life balance is. So I hope that all of you guys are dealing with the circumstances around the world positively or as positively as you can. And I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. So back to today's video, gonna quickly go over basically all the mods that I've done to the car in the past eight months. I'll, I'll deliver some short comments here and there. And also I'll talk about a couple things to look forward to this year. So with all the mods that I'm talking about in today's video, you can definitely look forward to content on those mods as soon as I get them done with the editing. So right before we get into it, I just wanna let you guys know that pretty much everything that I'm talking about here today, I'm gonna to try my best to list every single part with purchase links in the video description below. Now, some of the links are affiliate links where if you guys click and do a purchase, I'll make a little bit of a kickback. So all the money basically just gets recycled into supporting the channel. So I very much appreciate it if you guys choose to purchase your parts through any of those links. So that being said, let's get to the first thing that I did to the 2020 Honda Civic Si. And really it just starts out with the keys. I actually got this little rubber, um, insulating like cover for my key fob because I noticed that for my previous car, having a bunch of keys attached to it, I feel like really chipped away at all of the plastic around it. So having a little bit of extra protection on it is just something to just make me feel a little bit at peace to the condition of my stuff. But anyways, enough of the boring stuff. Let's get to the more fun mods here. All right, so to talk about one of the first mods that I transferred over from the 2017 uh, Civic Si to the 2021 is the Acuity Short Shifter. Now, I got a bag covering the shift knob because one, it's a little bit cold here in New England. So if you guys ever purchased the Esco T6 shift knob and it comes in this bag, keep the bag because this is nice to have when the shift knob gets hot in the summer. It's nice to have to just keep it insulated so your hands stay nice and comfortable as you initially start driving the car. But that being said, the real reason I have a bag on here is because I got some prototype goodies under here and I don't want to show them off just yet but you guys will be one of the first to know once i'm ready to reveal um, what's underneath but anyways i transferred this from the 2017 honda civic si and when i did it actually had i want to say 40,000 miles on the shifter and now with the car approaching hold on let me turn the car on for a second i just want to get the mileage on the car here all right so you can see that the car is basically approaching 10,000 miles and i'm going to post a 10,000 mile update and collectively put more of my thoughts about the car uh, with that 10,000 mile update. But anyways, my point is, is that this shifter has held up really, really nicely for the past 50,000 miles or so. And uh, it still practically feels like it did once it was broken in. That was basically one of the first things I did to the car. And man, this thing just really eliminates the play uh, that exists in the stock shifter. Again, a huge, huge, huge props to the engineering team at Acuity for really getting a shifter that addresses all the um, negatives and cons that drivers experience with the stock shifter assembly. If you guys don't want to invest in a full shifter though, you guys can also pick up their stage two upgrades. I highly recommend those as well. And those upgrades, in my opinion, make the stock shifter um, as best as it could possibly be. Maybe the stage two is a better option for you, but for me, man, these shifts are awesome. And this is reverse. I don't even have the cable bushings installed and it's pretty smooth already. All right, now moving outside the car. I apologize, the car is so dirty. We just had a recent storm here, so haven't had a chance to really uh, wash the car. But one of the other mods that I've transferred over from the old 2017 Honda Civic Si was the AWE Touring Edition exhaust system. Absolutely in love with this exhaust system. I've fiddled with it a bunch just to kind of get the fitment exactly where I want it, but I'll probably work on it a little bit more, so I'll have more comments in a future video with that. This system has treated me so well. There's no drone. I love the tone from the exhaust system. The tone from this exhaust is really aggressive, but it's not too obnoxious and it's not raspy at all in my opinion. So that pretty much covers the things that I transferred over from the old car to the new one. Now let's go over a couple things that I've done exclusively to the new car. Now, starting off with these high rev sport taillights. Love these taillights. They were about 300-ish dollars when I purchased them from Boosted Whips Official. Um, and that includes the price of shipping. So very impressed by one, the cost of these taillights. And I'm also impressed by also, it's pretty much plug and play. There was a couple little things I had to do extra because there's an extra wire to make the animation continuous between uh, both sets of taillights here. So that will be explained in another video as well. One of my favorite things about these taillights is definitely the red lenses. They didn't really have these out until recently. So that was one of the motivating factors for me to pick this up. 
Okay, moving down here, this kind of goes with a set of three parts that I purchased from edgeautosport.com. I'll leave a link in the description again, but one of the first things I purchased from them was a set of Rally Armor mud flaps. They've actually been basically holding up pretty well. The glossy sheen, I know you can't really tell because it's dirty now, but the glossy sheen holds up pretty nicely. The reason why I chose these mud flaps was because I wanted something that was a little bit more aggressive than the OEM style uh, mud guards that I had for the 2017 Honda Civic Si. The next thing that I've installed in the car that I've yet to post a video about is the Eibach Pro lowering springs. They did about a one inch drop on the front and the rear. Honestly, this is the exact drop I'm looking for. I'm not looking for too much of a drop because I live in Massachusetts. There's a ton of potholes. Definitely not looking to just take out something from the bottom end of my car but I really like the fitment so far with these lowering springs. And honestly, I might get some spacers for the stock wheels just to give it a little bit more poke. Another part that I installed from Angelo Sport that you don't see is actually the uh, rear motor mount insert. And that motor mount insert alone was also an excellent mod. It provided a little bit more responsiveness in uh, throttle input, improved the quality of shifts a little bit due to it minimizing the amount that the entire drivetrain flexes and rotates. So moving on to the side of the car, you can see I have these really cool window visors. They're slightly tinted, so you can kind of see my fingers underneath, they're not completely black. Um, so I really did like the look of those with the car because they kind of remind me of the Mugen style window visors. They come with 3M tape, so they really went on really easily and it was a, the, the install process was pretty smooth. Also, I have a video coming out on those. And in the same video, I'm gonna also be talking about these Suma Performance Wide Angle Mirrors. These have been treating me really, really well for the past five to six months I've had these on so far. I'm actually gonna have to revise part of the install video because I forgot to clip the um, rubber backing of the two pegs here into the housing before I actually pushed the mirror back in place. So I'll talk about that in the install video once I tackle that. And along with these side mirrors, I decided to also pick up a really cheap set of carbon fiber side mirror caps uh, from Amazon as well. I think these were $40 for the pair. Um, they're a little bit dirty, but the gloss has been holding up pretty nicely. From far away, it's pretty convincing, but of course, once you get really close, the hydro dipping um, starts to kind of show its uh, true colors here. There's not really many gaps aside from the one gap on the inside there. That I could never really get to fit correctly, but overall, I was pretty happy with the purchase. Now, moving on to the front, you guys will notice the most recent thing that I've purchased. These are Morimoto headlights. I purchased these from the Retrofit source. I think I paid about $720 with their Black Friday discount, and that includes shipping as well. So I was stoked to get these headlights for that price. Along with these headlights, I decided to install these Sumer Performance side marker lights. I wired these side marker lights to the turn signals so that they actually have a small sequential uh, amber glow to them when the turn signal is activated or when you activate the hazard lights. All right, popping the hood here. There's nothing really impressive, but I'm just gonna show you one thing here. All right, so with the hood up, you guys can see I haven't really done much at all to the engine bay. The only really nice bling I have is this really cool Acuity oil cap. Huge props to the design on this because you can remove this in three ways. One by hand, and if it's too tight, and someone basically over torqued it, you can stick a screwdriver through the cross holes to undo it. And you can also use a 15 millimeter socket to remove the cap as well if it's too tight. The threads basically match a bunch of Hondas and Acuras. The exact specifications are on their website. Okay, in addition to the oil cap, I have these side covers uh, for the engine bay here. I purchased these also off Amazon. If you guys notice, there's a hole that I drilled on both of these side covers and the reason why I drilled a hole is because um, there was previously some hood struts that I purchased from eBay um, that actually helped support the hood. The hood struts worked well but I just didn't really like the quality and the way that they actually fitted to the hood and honestly long term it actually threw the alignment off of one of the hinges on my hood there so I decided to remove them because they got in the way more than they were useful in my opinion. They do look cool at car meets if you were to pop the hood up and the hood just supports it there without a prop like this. But now in my opinion, you have a little bit more hassle because you can't even open the hood as high as the service position with the hood struts installed because it only gives you one position to hold the hood in place. So in my opinion, sticking to the OEM uh, prop really I think is more ideal because then you can also just move it to there to really open the hood up to its full height. Oh, it's cold. It's getting cold. It's uh, right in the middle of February and Man, it's not getting any warmer too soon. So I'm really hoping that spring's gonna come sooner than later. Oh, 
Oh, wow, I am missing something huge. I'm missing something huge. All right, so if you guys noticed in a couple of the clips early on, I have a little cable here and that's to my K-Tuner. And I got the K-Tuner V2, the one with like the screen and stuff, and it actually mounts next to my dash cam. So I bought the K-Tuner from Fearable and I'm running their stage 1.5 tune in the car. I really wanted to run a tune in my previous car, but because that car was technically my work vehicle, um, I didn't want to really do anything that could pretty much give me issues down the road, let's say with like warranties or frankly with my own job. But because I left that job and ended up getting this car and now this is pretty much my uh, car for my own videography needs, I don't really have to worry about the kinds of mods I want to do to it. So that's pretty much the motivating factor behind getting a tune to begin with. So as soon as the car hit about 5,000 miles or so in June or July of 2020, I was like, you know what? Time is right. Let's get a K-Tuner. Around that time, the Fearable 1.5 tune came out for the first time. I've been driving it for the past 5,000 miles. Now that it's almost hit 10,000, it's been awesome. Really, really love the tune. The car runs so much smoother. I really hope down the line, um, I'll gain some confidence to try out their ethanol tune with their stage 2.5. So maybe I'll consider getting a flex fuel kit for that, but. Who knows? It's hard to keep up with everything, especially when I let myself fall behind a little bit. I'm just trying to make sure I didn't miss anything. All right, so I guess now that I've gone over everything that I've already done to the car, let me go over to the things to look forward to next. So first off, I purchased a 27.1 intake with the TIP. So that's gonna be a really, really fun mod to do. From my early inspections on their install guide, it looks like it's going to be a pretty smooth install, in my opinion. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want specific types of sound bites. I have yet to decide where I want to place a camera and audio recording stuff to figure out where to record the best comparison between the stock intake with the complete 27.1 intake and TIP. So aside from the 27.1 intake and the tip, I also have a Alcantara shift boot that I'm going to install in the car because I'm sick and tired of the fake uh, pleather material that they came in. And frankly, it's really easy to tear too if you're trying to replace like the shift boot collar. But anyways, on the long term, I have interior lighting mods that I want to consider. I want to do uh, floor lights and I got a pretty clever way that I'm trying to figure out on how to do that so you don't have to splice too many wires or tap fuses. I'll also probably try to go over how to route the wiring for a dash cam as well because the one that I'm going to get actually has a rear camera as well. So I'm going to figure out how to route the wiring to that rear camera in the rear window there. Aside from that, I'm probably also gonna try to get lightweight wheels with summer tires to anticipate the warmer seasons ahead. And lastly, of course, I think this is a little bit more long-term because the car is pretty new, but I'll probably end up trying to get some more brake mods on the car done. So I want new rotors, new pads. I'm gonna try to do some artsy little touches on the actual brake system as well. I'm basically trying to put a little bit more of my personality into the car and do it in a way that's a little bit more unique that people haven't really done so in the past. Aside from that, I really can't think of anything else to do to this car in the short term. So I'd love to hear any of your suggestions as to mods that I should consider. I'd also love to hear if you guys have any specific requests on what I should cover when I tackle the installs of any of the parts that you haven't seen yet on the channel. I really appreciate all the support you guys have been giving me thus far. I do these videos because I really wanna help other individuals install aftermarket parts. We all wanna do fun things to our cars and we wanna get excited about driving. So yeah, I just wanna be a helping hand with that. I know I haven't been around um, as often as I wanted to, but just know that I'm still here, I'm still doing well, and I still wanna make some awesome content for you guys. So with that being said, my name is Palin Song, and then I'll see you guys in the next video.